everyone, it's Kara, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another Sketchbox unboxing video, and I did get the January and February boxes, but I never recorded because I was, well, busy for the holidays in January. And then February, I've been busy with work, so I just didn't have time to post videos about those sketch boxes. However, I did post my artwork and such on Instagram if you're interested in seeing what I at least created with the boxes. And yeah, um, I'm just going to get into showing you what came in this box. As always, before I actually get into showing the products in the box and how much they all are, I show the actual artwork on the box. And this month I am honored and excited because it's my own artwork on the box. And this may not look familiar to some of you if you are only subscribed to me on YouTube because this was the January Sketchbox artwork, which again, as I said before, I was busy in January with holidays and just didn't have time to record that video. But I do have the little artwork in this tiny sketchbook here. And basically that month, the box contained a bunch of fine liners and these were included. So I did a lot of cross hatching and hatching techniques in order to create that artwork and I'm really happy with it and I'm so excited to be on the box, but yeah. <laughs> the first item in the box is a sketchbox sticker and it's really up to you to decide what you want to do with it. As for me, I usually put them on my sketchbooks. The first actual art item of the box is this Liquitex Professional Metallic Acrylic Ink. I have the color Iridescent Rich Bronze, and as you can see, it's very shiny and shimmery in the bottle. I would expect nothing less of a metallic ink, though. And they say that the colors vary. I don't know if that means everybody gets a different color in their boxes, or if that means they just come in a variety of colors, which I would kind of expect. But these retail for $7.49. The next item in the box, and I'm going to mess up the name, I just don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to try my best, but it is the Kiritake Zeiko Sutaku Food Pen. This is number seven, and the actual tip of the brush looks like this. It's a fine liner, but it's not like super fine. This came in a package with two ink cartridges, and I'm really hoping that my camera focuses for it because it's been having issues with focusing. But the ink cartridges look like this, and it takes a little bit of force and pressure to actually put into the pen. I already have one in there, but that's what those look like. These pens retail for $6.94. The next item in the box is very familiar to me, actually, because we received the same type of product but a different size in a previous box. It is the Princeton Velvet Touch Round size 8 brush. I mean, it's a brush, it's a paintbrush, but we've received a different type in a previous box, and this is the one we received previously. I was really excited to get this because I do enjoy these brushes, and they're very comfortable to use. The bristles are very soft, and this retails for $14.25. The next item in the box I was surprised about because this is a brand I use a lot on my channel and I'm sure some of you know immediately when I say I use it a lot. They know immediately what brand it is. It is Copic. <laughs> but this is the Copic Opaque White with Brush Ink. And I had never seen this before. I didn't even know they had an opaque ink like this. So I'm excited to see what all I can do with it and... I mean, I'm just, I'm just excited. I'm kind of upset I didn't know of it. But it comes with this brush, and it's a very, very fine brush, as you can see. This retails for $8.99, and they say that it's a staff favorite. Actually, both of the last two items are a staff favorite, the brush and the ink. The next item in the box is this Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell. I don't know how you guys want to pronounce it, but... It's a polychromo pencil, 
And this is an orange glaze one, they say. I've never actually owned a Faber-Castell product before, or Faber-Castell. So I'm excited. I wanted to order the watercolor pencils because I want to do doll repaints and stuff. But I'm excited. This retails for $2.85. There is one other item in this, but I want to cut away and come back to it because I kind of already put the artwork on. I've already created an artwork, so I'll be back in a second. The last item in the box was a canvas board, and this was a bonus item. It doesn't say a price or anything on it. It's a four inch by six inch board, and this is the artwork I created. I don't have a speed drawing or anything this week for it. I kind of was creating this on my own time. I was working on it a little bit at work. Wasn't always home to work on it. So I did it all off camera. But I want to talk about my experience actually using the materials on the board. And yeah, discuss it a little bit with you guys. My artwork for this month was actually inspired by the other featured artists in the month. There's always two featured artists. There's the one on the box, and then there's another one featured inside. But this is the other featured artists of the month. And this is by Melissa. I'm not going to pronounce the last names because I'm going to butcher it. So I will just leave a link to her pages in the description down below. The biggest thing I've noticed, though, is there's no texturing on their artwork, so I don't think they used the canvas board for theirs like I did, but that's, that's what theirs looks like. <laughs> and I'm sure using actual paper probably would have made life a lot easier instead of the canvas board. And that kind of leads into me talking about my experience with the materials. I did not like the canvas board for these specific materials. I'm sure that they would have been fine for paints or whatever, or the canvas board would have been fine for paints or whatever, and the actual ink and pencil would have been fine for hot pressed paper. I usually use hot pressed paper for those who don't know the difference between cold and hot. Cold pressed has more texturing while hot pressed is very flat, like... This would be hot pressed. It has no texturing. So that's what the difference is between those. So I think hot pressed paper, heck, even cold pressed paper, just paper in general would have been great for these materials. I did not like the canvas because there's a bunch of little divots within the canvas and trying to get the ink to actually stay in there and not want to puddle together was a little bit of a pain in the butt for me. <laughs> and... I just didn't like the colored pencil on the canvas as much. It worked, but it didn't work as well as it would have on, say, a sheet of paper. Maybe I'm just not experienced enough with it, and that's very possible. I'm not very experienced with canvas, so that's the thing. And then I'm also not that experienced with inks. But I tried my best, and I'm pretty happy with the artwork overall, actually. This is my first time trying to draw a lion. The lion turned out very well considering, and I don't draw animals a lot. If you follow me anywhere else, you would know that I just don't draw animals. So, I mean, I'm happy with it overall. I just don't care for how the materials themselves worked on canvas. I did do some swatches on a separate sheet of paper, and this was actual paper. Um, I have the little liner here, the colored pencil, and then the metallic ink, and then I have the white Copic ink going over top of those. But that's just my opinion. I'm probably going to try creating another artwork this month. I'm try. I'm going to try to this month using actual paper instead of canvas. And I'll see how it goes. And if you want to keep updated on that or see if I actually do do it, um, I have links to all of my social media in the description down below. So you can just follow me on there and you might see that artwork. Keyword is might. It depends on my work schedule. And I also have other things I need to get done. But yeah. Um, I realized I never covered earlier that the sketch boxes, I get the premium box and that's about $40 a month. That's after you include tax and everything. But 
the base price is $35 a month for the premium box and $25 for the basic box. I always get premium because I'm a little bit more advanced. I've been drawing for a few years, so I felt like I could do the premium. Uh, I think that's about it for this video. So, if you like my art, I am so bad at talking today. This is also like my seventh time trying to record this video, so I'm going to blame it on the fact that I've been sitting here a while trying to record this and it hasn't been going that well. Anyway, let's try that again. If you like this artwork, feel free to leave a like on the video. Uh, if you have not already and you'd like to be, subscribe to my channel, support my work. I leave links to all my social media, shops, my Patreon, etc. down in the description down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. And that's probably going to be the Copic Colors thing. I know I said that I was going to do a Galaxy tutorial and that's still going to come. But it's just, I have other things planned for this month and I completely forgot about them when I was recording the favorite art supply video. So yeah, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Bye!